The Australasian gannet, or takapu, has been nesting at Cape Kidnappers in the Hawke's Bay since the 1870s and is now the largest mainland breeding colony of gannets in the world. These beautiful birds make exciting viewing for the many tourists who come here to see them in all their gannet glory. Let's find out more. They normally spend most of their life at sea, but they need to come ashore and build nests and lay eggs. And they do that normally in places where there are not great numbers of predators, but um, more usually where there are good supplies of fish offshore at the right times of year, and Cape Kidnappers has that. They turn up in early spring, and they start prospecting and making their nests, and then they lay in early summer. And here we are now in the middle of January, and most of the chicks have hatched. Most of these chicks that you can see scattered through the colony are about eight or nine weeks old, but there are still a few pairs that are late that are still sitting on eggs. And there's a fair chance that those chicks will never get through because the fish will have gone by then. They begin to breed for their first time when they're about three or four years old. Um, prior to that, they spend their life in Australia, which is interesting. And then they come back here and they attempt to breed, but they have a sort of a false start. Now they can't find space in the dense colony that's already taken up. So all these birds around the edge are young and they're going through the motions of trying to breed, but none of them will actually breed until next year. Do these guys mate for life? A lot of these pairs last a very long time together. They might breed for 10 years plus together, but it turns out about a quarter of them divorce every year. And you've got to wonder why they do it, because when they do divorce, it's often not as a result of a bad breeding experience. They can just go fine and then they divorce. And then with their new partner, they usually do worse for one year than they did the year before. So it's a real puzzle about why they do it. I've seen a couple of them doing a little, almost looks like a dance. What's that about? That's just a courtship dance. They go away for about 48 hours generally to feed their chicks. And amazingly, they're just finding out now that um, they're going as far as 100 kilometres to obtain a meal for their chicks. And it takes them 48 hours to collect it, so they'll, they'll go away and they'll sit overnight on the water, drift all night, and then they fly back home with a full belly. And when they come back, they relieve the partner that's already on the nest. So this coming back is, hello, I'm back, darling. It's your turn to go away and get a feed now. This is obviously quite a big tourist attraction for the Hawke's Bay. Have people always come here to see the gannet? I reckon this has got to be New Zealand's longest running eco-tourism business. Because I think people started coming here in 1946. And I just actually did a sum not so long ago and I worked out just roughly how many people come and what these birds are worth to the Hawke's Bay economy. And they're worth something like between one and $1.5 million easily a year. And I, I think it's just a fine example of ecotourism and how it can be sustainable over a long term. Wildlife can be a, a, an absolute benefit to a local economy. Yeah. You can get up close and personal to this bustling Gannett city by tractor, bus, or even by walking up to view the colony. Whichever way you decide to view these incredible birds, this is a natural experience that's not to be missed.